Okay, welcome everyone to the Veterans Holistic Resiliency Clinic. And I cannot believe that it's been exactly a year ago that I found these wonderful people. And uh, it's just been wonderful. And uh, I am a retired physical therapist. And uh, I really was quite interested in getting involved with the veterans community. And I got my mindfulness training through the Veterans Yoga Project. And um, we actually have online classes every day through www.veteransyogaproject.org. And go to online streaming. The classes are free. And there's a variety of styles and uh, breath work. And it's Monday through Friday. So I hope you can take advantage of that. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about resiliency. We hear that word all the time, including in the title of our clinic. And so what does that mean exactly? And resiliency is the ability to adapt to changes, whether it's a physical change in our body, uh, intellectual challenges, uh, emotional or spiritual challenges. And it's the ability of the body to return back to what we call homeostasis or a balanced state. And um, yoga has been um, a wonderful tool uh, that's proven through scientific research as a fabulous tool to use to help develop resiliency. And um, resiliency involves not only stability, but also fluidity and flexibility. And as Karen mentioned, nature has some wonderful examples for us to use as sources of in inspiration. And I'll be mentioning a few of those today as we go through our practice. And um, scientists can also measure resiliency. And that's done with something called heart rate variability. And what that means is um, we look at the time interval between heart beats. And the wider, the longer the time interval, the healthier the subject or the person is. The shorter the time interval, the, the less healthy. And I'm not talking about physical athletic prowess, although that's true also, but I'm talking about general wellness and health for all of us. And um, so researchers have found that it's a great tool to work or to use with the veterans and other folks, especially with PTSD, to help um, work on tools and uh, techniques for building resiliency. So um, we're going to do about 40 minutes of, um, I won't call it work, but work together today. And we'll do about 10 minutes um, worth of breath, breath work or breath play. And I really like to focus on, on the breath because it's always with us, obviously. And it's one of the easiest things to do to employ, to be able to tap into the nervous system, calm the system down and restore our, our balance. Then we'll do about 25 minutes or so of asana practice, which is the um, mindful movements. And then we'll finish with about five minutes or so uh, with relaxation, uh, meditation, and sort of wrapping up our, our time together. So with that said, I'd like you to sit in a comfortable position. If you're on the floor, that's fine. Cross-legged is fine, or you can lean against the wall or go ahead and sit up in a chair, but it is important to get the, the spine in a vertical position. And the reason for that is we want this energy to be flowing up and down the spine. And we also want our rib cage to be lined up so it doesn't compress our lungs. And we want a lot of space in between the vertebrae. When we're in a slumped position, um, our muscles and our ligaments, et cetera, are basically trying to support our weight. And that's not their job. Bones are supposed to support our weights. So we want it basically stacked up in a vertical position as best we can. And we'll have our feet flat on the floor, as Karen mentioned, try to connect with the ground, with the earth, all four corners of the feet on the ground. And let's go ahead and bring the shoulders up, back, 
and down as if you're putting your shoulder blades in your back pocket. So with that, we're opening up the heart. We're opening up the rib cage, opening up the shoulders, opening up our energy. So I invite you to rest your hands on your thighs, either in a palms up position, sort of a position of acceptance or receiving, or palms down if it feels more comfortable for you. And again, I invite you to close your eyes if that's, if that's a safe thing for you to do. To do. If not, just a soft gaze, soft gaze, and we'll bring our awareness into the room and into our bodies, and we're just going to breathe. And in yoga, we breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. So a nice, full, rich inhalation. And a nice, full, rich exhalation. Breathing in and breathing out. And we know those thoughts like to come and sort of tap on our shoulder. And we can think of those as clouds. So we'll just let them pass right on by without attending to them. So our awareness is the sky, the open sky. Our thoughts are those clouds that are passing through. And now I invite you to put one hand on your belly and we're gonna explore the mechanical aspects of the breath. So I really want you to be aware of the sensation of the breath. As you inhale, the belly will move forward, expansion. And as you exhale, there's a contraction. Breathing in, expansion. Breathing out. Contraction. So we call this belly breathing, diaphragmatic breathing, yoga breathing, it's all the same. And it's simply the diaphragm muscle moving out of the way so the ribs can expand and the lungs can take in more oxygen. And one more breath. Now I invite you to place your hands on your lower ribs, maybe slightly to the side. And when you breathe in, feel the expansion of the ribs, not only front to back, but also laterally. Imagine they're moving wide to the side of your body. And exhale. It's like a cylinder getting bigger and wider not a piston going up and down. And then imagine your ribs are going as wide as your hips and as wide as your shoulders. So take up a lot of space with that inhalation. And exhalation. And that's sort of part two of our three part breaths. So part one is the abdomen, the diaphragm, part two, the mid chest, now let's move our hands up to the upper chest. If your hands allow, you can kind of hook your thumbs underneath your armpits a little bit. Otherwise, your fingertips are below the collarbone and maybe just have them touch a tiny bit so you can appreciate the expansion and the contraction. So as we inhale, feel those upper ribs moving apart. We don't remember frequently that we even have ribs underneath our collarbone. Just one, maybe two. And I like to think of the rib cage, not as a cage, but actually a cradle, cradling our heart, protecting our vital organs. And one more breath in. And slow exhale. 
and you can relax your hands down. And now I'd like you to focus on the sensation of the breath. And as we breathe in, feel the coolness of the breath on the inner nostril rings. And as we breathe out, the warmth of that breath, that carbon dioxide. Breathing in cool, healing oxygen that we get from the plants and from nature. And breathing out warm carbon dioxide, which we give back to the plants, to the earth. It's a beautiful cycle. One more time. And then lastly, I'd like you to be aware to the, of the sound of the breath. So people learn or people tune into various things. Some, some people tune into the mechanical aspects of the breath, some the physical sensations of the nose. But now I'd like you to hear the breath as you breathe in, and especially on the exhale. If you've ever had the pleasure of being at the ocean and putting a seashell to your ear, and hearing the sound of the ocean. It's a beautiful experience. And this is kind of what this breath is called, ocean sounding breath. So especially on the exhalation, which is the calming aspect of the breath, that parasympathetic nervous system that brings us back to balance. And it's almost like you're breathing out of the back of your throat on that exhale. Okay, I'd like you to flutter your eyes open gently and just take a breath or two, your regular, regular breathing pattern. And then I'm going to go ahead and stand up and we'll move to our asana practice. Hello. Lainey, I cannot see you. You can't see me? No, I'm seeing the, now I'm seeing you. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm changing positions. So I'm going to be changing positions. So yeah, I might disappear for just a moment. Thank you. Kathy, you need to mute yourself. Sorry, um, IT issues here. Kathy, did you mute, mute yourself? She's muted on my end, Elaine. Okay, I, I, I see her in my big screen. Is that correct? I see you. Okay. Yeah, I see you, and Kathy's muted, at okay. least. Yeah, on my end. Now I, now I see okay. you because you're speaking, but before I saw her. Okay. Okay, there we go. Got Sorry. It. Okay. Okay, I'm being resilient. I'm breathing. It's just what it is. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and start with just some gentle movements. Trying to loosen up our hips and our knees from sitting. Just swing the arms, whatever's comfortable for you. This is not a orchestrated yoga pose.
Now I'd like you to bring your feet sort of hip distance apart and we're gonna bend the knees a little bit, like a little baby squat. And then imagine you're taking your arms across the top of a lake or pool and feeling the flow of the water. That's fluidity that's needed for resilience. So our legs are anchored down into the earth. And now we'll come back to center. And next will be our mountain pose. So in mountain pose, obviously strong, stable, grounded. So we'll find those all four, the four corners of our feet again. You can lift the toes if you want, press the toes down and really connect with the earth. And just for a moment, imagine you're going to push your ankle bones, your inner ankle bones together and see if you can feel that energy right on up, like the roots of a tree right on up into the trunk. You may or may not. No judgment if you don't. Nice vertical spine. We're going to draw the head back and in. Collarbones are wide, just like in sitting. Now we're going to go ahead and bring our arms out to the side as we inhale up. And exhale. Hands come to heart center. And we'll do that for maybe 10 repetitions. No need to count, I'll be doing that. So just try to create a flow between your breath and your arms moving. Inhale up, exhale down to heart center. And I like to imagine I'm pulling that sun energy right into my heart, but you might have another image you'd like to, to use. Yogi's choice. This is your practice. And now I'm going to add a little bit more movement with my legs. I'm going to bend my knees and move my hips into the space behind me like I'm sitting in a chair. And so this is called chair pose. And we'll do a few more movements like that. Ground down to lift up. Exhale, heart center, grounding down. Hands can reach down towards the earth. And exhale. If you'd like to go into a deeper squat and have your fingertips touch the earth, you can. Your choice, it's not important. Last time, inhale, ground down, rise up. And exhale, let's tuck that sun energy right into our heart center. Drop the chin into the lift of your heart. And just for a moment, take note. How's your body feeling compared to just a few moments ago before we started? Perhaps this could be your safe space as Karen talked about. and relax the hands down. And keeping with that tree, that tree idea, if you have a chair you'd like to use for support, that's fine. Or you could be close to a wall if you need the support, that's fine as well. If you don't, let's go ahead and we'll just Take that right foot and we'll windshield wiper that heel just a little bit. So the foot's going in and out. I know you probably can't see me. I'm probably too far away now. But I'm basically doing this with my foot just to loosen up that hip socket a little bit. So nice strong leg on the left. And we're going to lift that leg. We're going to slide the foot up towards the shin. Hands are either on our hips or heart center. And this is a classic 
balance pose in yoga called tree. And you're ready? Come on down and we'll switch legs. So we windshield wiper the left, just to loosen up that hip socket a little bit. Nice strong left leg as we slide the right foot up the shin. If you're very flexible and you want to tuck it way up there on your thigh, that's fine. But today I'm choosing to keep my foot on my shin, or you can even keep your foot on the floor, toes on the floor, maybe heel on your ankle. Doesn't matter. So once again, roots, trunk, the tree grounding down. You can also try this. I call this Michael Jordan, because <laughs> I saw him do this years ago. Michael Jordan, or all the way up, classic tree, arms are up, and gaze is up as well. But your choice. And hands to heart center. And this might be a nice time to bring up the self-talk that Karen talked that Karen talked about. So if you were having trouble with this. Asana with this form or this shape. Um, what what did you what did you tell yourself? Oh my gosh, I'm not doing it well enough. Oh my gosh, I hope nobody's watching me on the screen. Or or nothing, like it's just what it is. Doesn't matter. Next, we'll do something called glowing palm. And you know, unfortunately, down in, in the Gulf. These terrible storms are whipping through, you know, Louisiana and Texas. And I'm amazed when you see the photos and the videos. Of So what we do, we'll take the right foot, put it behind the left. We'll take our left arm and reach up, and we're going to just side bend to the right. And again, if you need your chair there for support, feel free. And so obviously, blowing palm, if you're swaying a little bit, that's pretty normal. And Yogi's Choice, if you want to use your other arm, that's fine. And let's go back and start position and we'll switch her out. So now left leg is behind the right. And right arm goes up and we side bend to the left. And what's the sensation in this position? How was it different from the other side? As we get older, we tend to be less symmetrical. But that's one of our goals in yoga, is to try to improve our symmetry. Because frequently that helps to manage or to prevent injuries and things of that nature. And again, Yogi's Choice, if you'd like to add that second Palm, feel free. And come on up. And release down. Okay, one more balance pose before we start some sun salutations. And this one is called Eagle. And I'm going to turn sort of to the side a little bit so you can see my hand positions. And we're going to focus on the arm positions of eagle, but you can also do a little mini squat. So arms are out straight, and now we're going to bring our right arm underneath our left arm, crossed as best you can at the elbow, 
and then palms back to back. Or if you're really flexible, you can wrap your arms all the way around. That's the classic position. And we want to gently squeeze our legs together, our arms together, and then lift up just a little bit. Eagle. Eagle, balance, focus, awareness. And then we'll just let him fly away and we'll switch. Left arm. Okay, left arm. Left arm has my wedding ring. Anybody else doing like left arm? Left arm is my wedding ring. Underneath the right. And again, you can either be here if that's comfortable or here for a full wrap. And we'll do a little mini squat knees together and gently squeeze eagle and if you want to lower yourself down just a little bit feel free not important and let's go ahead and release good okay We'll shake it out again a little bit. So now we'll do um, what's called sun salutation. And last month I used a chair. So feel free to use a chair. We did a couple with the back of the chair. And then we did a couple using the seat of the chair. So I'm going to also this, this month do the classic sun salutation on the mat. So I'll walk through once with the chair for those who are gonna use the chair, and then we'll go down and do the traditional classic positions with the mat. So first position, we're going to go ahead. I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see me better. We're going to bring our arms, inhale up, exhale, we're going to bend our knees, put our hands on the, on the chair seat, and we're going to walk back into downward facing dog, downward facing dog. So my, my ankles are underneath my hips, my arms are straight, and it's really about lengthening the spine rounding down, lengthening the spine. And then we're going to walk forward and gently hands on the back of your chair. You obviously don't want to push it over. And if you'd like to raise up on your toes and what we will do as called Cobra and come on down. The other one we'll do on the floor is called plank. It's basically an upper push-up position. So on the chair, it looks like this. So from down dog, we come forward, and then we just do a push-up on your chair. Nice strong belly, nice strong arms. Okay, so we're just gonna have fun with this. Do what you can. And I'm going to turn to the side rather than the front so you can see me better. Okay, we're gonna stand comfortable position in mountain pose. Let's bring our arms overhead as we did before. Inhale, exhale, bend the knees and forward fold. Inhale, hands come to the thighs, and we're going to straighten the legs. Make our legs and our back as strong as possible, as long as possible. Bend the knees. We'll step back to downward facing dog. Good. 
Knees are bent, spine is long, arms are straight. So on a big inhale, we're going to shift forward into that upper push-up position. Pull the belly in and up. Tailbone moves down towards the heels. Nice, strong arms. And then let's, let's lift up and back again. Downward facing dog. And then back to push-up position. Knees to the floor, and you're going to slowly lower yourself down, elbows by the body. And then we bring our shoulders up, back, and down, and lift the heart into cobra, cobra position. And down, curl the toes, bend the knees, back to downward facing dog, everybody's favorite. Now let's look up, lift up on the toes. We're gonna to walk forward, back to the front of your mat. Exhale, look at your knees. Bend the knees, reach out and up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Okay, let's go ahead, we'll do that one more time. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, knees straighten, spine straightens. Nice flat back. Exhale, bend the knees, step back. Downward facing dog. So let's take a few breaths here. Lift the hips up and back. Don't worry about your heels if they're not touching the floor. It takes a long time for that to happen, typically. Now we're going to shift forward into a push-up position called plank. And we'll bend our knees, lower ourselves down, chaturanga, all the way to the floor. Shoulders are up, back, and down. Heart comes up, cobra pose, and exhale, back to downward facing dog. Last time, hips are up and back. So let's connect, let's connect the hands to the shoulders, hips to the heels. Exhale. Inhale, look forward, bend the knees, step or lunge for an ashtanga, they jump forward. Finish the exhale, look at the knees. And now we bend the knees, grounding down, lifting up as we did at the beginning. And exhale, hands to heart center. And just take a moment, maybe do a body scan. Check in with yourself. How are you feeling? How's the breath? How's the mind? Are you able to stay focused or are you someplace else? Tap into that breath. Deep exhalation. Find your breath. Okay, we're gonna get back down on the floor, however you'd like to. You can do a sun salutation or just go ahead and come down on the floor. We're gonna be on an all fours position or quadruped. And we're gonna pull the belly in and up and we're gonna slide the right leg back behind us like Think of a clock, so it's a six o'clock position. Nice and firm, solid core. And then we'll lift that right leg up. 
And I invite you to lift your left arm up if you'd like. Talk about balance. Breathing. It's about length, not height. So good. And come on down and switch. Left leg slides along the mat. Nice strong leg. When you're ready, core is strong. Leg lifts, right arm lifts. And crown of the head reaching. Fingertips reaching. Heel is reaching. And exhale. Come on back. Using that same clock analogy, Let's put that right leg back at six o'clock. And I invite you to, to slide it around. Try five, try four, and even try three. So whatever your position of comfort, I think I'm gonna stay on four o'clock today. My right hand goes on my heart as I turn my body, look up to the heavens, look up to the sky, Reach my right arm up. I always like to lift the corners of my mouth in this position, a little soft Buddha smile. Sometimes I use this position as a time for gratitude or reaching for my, my goals, my, my intentions. And exhale. Come on back to center and we'll switch and do the other side. I'm going to do the same side only so that I can face the computer and you can hear me better. So left leg straightens into that six o'clock position, five o'clock, four o'clock, sorry, <laughs> seven, eight, or nine, nine o'clock. Left hand on the heart as you turn your body, rotate the body, and glancing up. And reach for the stars. Reach for your intentions. Breathing in. And breathing out. Stable, pleasant, rich breathing. And back to center. And let's go into down dog one more time. Last one, I promise. And then we'll step forward, walk forward, finish the exhale. Look at your knees. And now we'll ground down and lift up one last time. Exhale, hands to heart center. Drop the chin into the lift of your heart. Check in with your breath. And release. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and go back to the floor for some, some relaxation. Yoga is all about effort and ease, finding that balance, just like resiliency, fluidity, and stability. The old yoga texts define health as a flexible mind and a stable body. It's sort of the opposite of what we think of yoga, especially in the West now, right? We think of it as these incredible contortions and all these cool, cool moves. Well, they are cool moves, but it's really not the essence of yoga. Awareness, movement with awareness, breath, gratitude, meditation or concentration is the essence of yoga. So if you still have that chair available, you can go ahead and lie on your back and put your feet up in the chair.
So you're at a 90-90 position, right angles. Arms can be out straight at your side in a T, or also bent 90-90 like a goal post, or we call it cactus. Or if you prefer to just lie on your back, and we, we call this Shavasana, or resting pose, or certainly if you're more comfortable sitting. Yogi's choice. Tune into your breath. What's the sensation of your breath at this point? Where is the breath? I'm changing positions, but I'd like you to stay where you are for a few more minutes. I'm just moving forward so it's easier to see you and talk to you. This is a very important aspect of yoga this rest, this is when your body really takes in all the benefits of the movements, the breathing, the awareness. This is when your vital signs change in a good way. That heart rate we mentioned, heart rate variability, large and healthy, blood pressure down, respiratory rate down, stress hormones down, glucose down, So one final thing is feel your body on the earth. Back of your head, touching the earth. Back of your shoulders, anchoring you. Hands, elbows, buttocks. back of the thigh, heels, the ultimate grounding down, connecting with the earth, feeling the support, trusting the support, trusting this as a safe space to be, And now I'd like you to flutter your eyes open and maybe bring your breath up to the surface and you can wiggle your fingers 
and your toes kind of helps you bring yourself back into the room. And when you're ready, you can turn over on your side. Either side is okay. It doesn't have to be your right. Wanting to make sure the blood pressure is balanced before we sit up and giving the rest of your body as well a chance to return to balance. So when you're ready, go ahead and, and sit up and you can stay cross-legged or you can come back to your chair like I have. And we'll do one more movement. It's kind of a mudra, if you will. A mudra is a hand position or gesture that's pretty powerful and it has to do with the meridians in our body. Sort of, it follows the Chinese medicine, but I've sort of incorporated that with a, with a nice closing mudra. And that is we take one more breath in and we exhale to our heart center and whatever calm and peace and joy and gratitude you might be feeling right now. If you'd like to share that with others, you can open up and that can be with those of us here in this room or your family, the community or the world. And whatever gratitude and joy they have to share, you can bring that back in, tuck, tuck it into your heart. And then in yoga, we frequently finish with namaste, hands in heart center. Namaste means the honor is mine. The light in you honors the light in me. The light in me honors the light in you. So, namaste. Namaste.